Hello, hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. <clears throat> it is Saturday, March 24th, um, roughly uh, 945. We've got about 15 minutes until Mr. Nelson Morales starts his exclusive webinar um, sponsored by the Real Estate Investment Group at Nationwide Realty. And uh, if you're in this room or if you're watching this video, you are not in the main webinar. Uh, you are in the sidelines with me, Geo Redis, Director of the Real Estate Investment Group, <clears throat> and you're going to get my commentary as I share my screen with you as we listen to the webinar together. Um, so it is uh, it is going to be uh, a little bit a little bit different. So you won't actually be in the webinar. You'll be watching the webinar with me and hearing my commentary. Uh, some things that might be important or interesting to our investors or our buyers. Um, who would like a little bit of further commentary or, or opinion on what he's presenting. Um, I have the room set so that you automatically get muted upon arriving. So you won't be able to talk in this one. Uh, but in the sidebar over here, I believe, on your screen over here, or is it over here? I don't know. Um, but on one of the sides of the screen, there is a chat room uh, that you can open up with using the Hangout. Please post your questions in there. And I'll address them as I see them pop up in case there's some things that I might be able to answer. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen uh, here in just a moment. And, um, and so you'll hear my voice, but uh, you probably won't see me. Let's see where we are right here. And so... Um, There we go. Got that working right. Uh, so we're just waiting here for uh, the for the webinar to to start. It's going to start here in about thirteen minutes or so. Um, Mr. Nelson Morales has been a national mortgage expert uh, for many many years. He works with a company called Blue Leaf Lending that is uh, at the at the very top of the business in terms of technology, in terms of products that they offer, um, in terms of just their general approach to uh, lending in this day and age. It's, it's, a, it's a very interesting time to be borrowing money. There's a lot of different programs and ways and methods to borrow money, to leverage yourself or to get yourself into a property. Um, and Nelson's going to touch upon some of these today. It's going to be a nice open forum for the people that are actually in the webinar to be able to ask questions. Um, so uh, looking very much forward to seeing what he has to offer. So I'm going to go silent for a little bit. Uh, if you uh, are just joining the room and you don't see anything happening, then uh, you'll know that I'll pop back in right around 10 o'clock when the uh, webinar goes live. So we thank you very much for showing up and for watching.
All right, everyone, I was just notified here. Um, if you are actually joining the webinar, uh, there is, and you're doing it from a desktop, there's an actual app, a Cisco app that you can install as an add-on <clears throat> that'll make joining a little bit easier. Um, so by all means, Uh, try to download that. It'll make it happen a lot faster. Hello. I will say that the uh, connect. Anybody else on the line? No. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, just a little heads up here. Connecting through this system, it required a couple of downloads, and it's not really clear how to get here. It took me a few minutes. I'm just giving a heads up on that. So. People that are not familiar with the system might have difficulty connecting to this. Okay. You're um, open line I can't see you. What can I do to see you? I can't see you at all. My video is on. Right, but I don't know what to do here. There's no directions here. It says connected to audio. Is there a square box in the middle of your screen? Yeah, I'm on. I downloaded the app that it gave. Um, it, it's not letting me see you at all. I don't know what is going on. Can you see me? I can. Yes, you can. I sure can yep. Yeah, I have no. I can't see you at all. I'm just looking at a box. Can you see the presentation? No, nothing. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, when the time comes for you to start, go ahead and mute me because I'm open on the sidelines. Uh, and uh, I'm going to share your the screen here with your presentation going on, so we'll listen to it together. Okay. In fact, I'm going to do that right now because we're already live on the, on the uh, screen, okay? We're already live on the sidelines right now, so give me a second and I'm going to share... Okay, there we go. So I'm looking at your screen. We're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and uh, take it away whenever the, whenever you're ready. We're going to wait. I'm going to mute the lines and then I'm going to wait for a couple 
couple people there to jump on. I can see the participant list on here. Sure. Sure thing. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, mute me, okay? Because I can't figure out how to do any of this stuff on here. That's fine. Give me one Hey, hello, George. How are you? Hey, man. Good morning. Good morning, George. You may want to. Uh, you may want. To, I'm going to be muting everybody that comes in. Okay. Okay. Um, you may want to join the webinar uh, directly uh, through the link that we sent that I sent out um, email this morning, and also the one that uh, that might be a might be a little bit better for uh for you to uh to to call in okay 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 i'll, I'll, I'll sign off of this one and join the other one okay join the main one that nelson's uh got it's in the email that we sent okay Yeah, for sure. Welcome everyone, uh, anyone who is joining now or anyone who is um, who is uh, going to be watching this in retrospect. Uh, there are some notes in the sidebar in the chat uh, portion of this video hangout. Um, you are not in the main webinar, however, you are on the sidelines with me, Gio Aridis, the director of the Real Estate Investment Group. We're going to watch the webinar together and I'm going to give you some commentary as it may apply to real estate um, as he uh, as he presents. If you have any questions uh, you will be muted on the way in uh, to this meeting so if you have any questions uh, that you'd like to pose while you're watching on anything that I'm saying or anything that Mr. Morales is saying uh, please post those comments up in the sidebar, um, and uh, we'll address them. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and start here. It's a few minutes past 10 o'clock. So um, first and foremost, I wanted to thank everybody for attending this webinar sponsored by the Aredos Investment Group. Um, they've allowed me the ability to come in here and they're hosting me to give my whole entire seminar, mortgages, what everybody should really know. I'm going to go through some slideshow, then we'll open up for Q&A. You can also feel free to send your questions, questions through the chat room as well in case you don't want to be on a live line. Right now, the lines are muted. So if you do, just send me a quick message via chat, and then I can go ahead and unmute the lines, and then we can speak. Otherwise, you can go ahead and ask your questions. The presentation is going to take probably about 15 or 16 minutes itself, and then we'll open up the floor for about another 15 minutes for questions. The only thing I really ask is that if, if the questions are super specific to your situation, that maybe you might want to write them down, um, send them to me via chat, or we can set up a separate call outside the webinar. To go over that information it may not be particular to everyone on the call so we want to keep the the questions general as possible um so my name is nelson morales i'm a senior mortgage consultant with Lulee blending Lulee blending is a 
subsidiary of Midwest Community Bank based out of Rockford, Illinois. I can lend in all 50 states. I've been in this business since uh, 2001. And um, it's been a, a great experience, even though there was some years there that were that were a little tough. You have all my information up on the screen. That is my direct office line, as well as my uh, email address and my um, web address. I'm going to be placing Mr. Nelson Morales' information into the side chat bar for everyone. Gio Rados, he can also give you my information. If that's something that um, you need and you want to talk to me about some things that you don't want to speak of on the webinar itself. What we're going to do is we're going to get started. We're going to go through everything and then um, hopefully you guys enjoy. It should be pretty, uh, pretty informative. So basically what you have is our agenda is we're going to talk about the definition of a mortgage. We're going to talk about types of mortgages. We're going to talk about getting pre-approved credit scores, documentation, application, how to choose the right lender, your closing costs. We're going to talk about um, contract to close time frame, how long does it take, and then of course we'll have the Q&A. So what's a mortgage? A mortgage is basically a loan, the money that you borrow from the bank, and then on that money, you go ahead and you pay interest for borrowing that money, and you typically have a time period of 15 to 30 years. Everyone's very familiar with what principal is. That's the portion of your payment that goes to paying down the loan. Interest is the portion that you pay back to the bank for the money you borrowed. Then you also have your taxes, which are included, your insurance, which will be regardless of property type, condo, townhome, single-family home, whatever that might be. Then you have your ever famous that everyone loves to hear about, which is the private mortgage insurance, which typically if you are putting 20% down, it goes away. But there are some things that we can do to um, manipulate the mortgage insurance. If your credit score is high enough where possibly you could very well get rid of it as well. Then last but not least, you have what's called HOA dues. That might come um, on a condo or a townhome which are also called plan unit developments. And um, and then also there's sometimes association fees for homes that are in communities um, like you guys have out in Vegas. There's a couple different types of mortgages. Um, the first type of mortgage is gonna be conventional mortgage. That's what everybody knows and hears about for the most part. You can do 3% to 20% down. You mostly need no less than a 620 credit score. And then at the very last there on the left, it says 31 over 51 ratios. That's what's called your debt to income ratio. And all that really means is, is what percentage of your income every month is the mortgage payment taking up in addition to any other payments you might have. So, for example, I put 50 there. If you get a new mortgage and that payment's going to be 1500 and then you have a car payment and that payment is 500 together that's $2,000. If you make $4,000, that's... 50% of what you make. That is how that number is calculated. You can always do the math for yourself on a piece of paper, take how much you make gross before your taxes, and then calculate it out, and you basically divide one number into the other. So you can see here, he's he actually has listed here FHA, VA, and USDA loans. Um, USDA would be for like livestock or for um, farm properties. going to give you 3.5% are always going to give you 0% down or 100% financing, and then USDA loans are going to be 0% down, 100% financing. More than likely in Vegas, you guys are going to fall into the category of 0% only in the case of a VA loan. USDA is only reserved for very rural areas. Now, with that being said, on the FHA and the VA loans, you can go down to a credit score as low as 550. That is possible. But on the USDA side, it's only 620. But again, you're probably not going to run into that. It's not in your area, more than likely. So I, w I wouldn't even worry about it. Now, the ratios for both the FHA and the VA, the ones you see there at 29 over 45, like I just explained, um, is going to be basically a standard. Every loan goes through an automated underwriting system. If you come to me and I go to do your loan, i got to put your loan through the system, and it's going to come back, and it's going to say, you have 46 percent but we approve it's okay sometimes it can be 50 sometimes it can be 53. i've seen it go as high as 61. 
the system takes into consideration all the compensating factors that are going into your loan. How long have you been in your job? Um, how much um, money do you have in assets? Are there reserves left over after you close on your loan? All those kinds of equations is what that system takes into account, and then that's how it comes up with that decision. The last category you're gonna see there is 20% down for what they call portfolio loans. If you look inside that blue little circle all the way to the right, it says portfolio non-conforming. These are special loans. And what I mean by special particularly is that oftentimes the bank itself, like my bank, would have their own set of guidelines and rules that would govern these loans and they would basically come into play when there are certain special circumstances or special areas in which we're trying to lend there. Nine times out of 10, you don't need one of those. In some rare cases, you do. There's a lot more factors that go into it. And if you think you fit into this category, I'd be happy to have a signed conversation with you about it. The free approval. There's basically four things that go into free approval. There's your credit, there's your income, there's your access. So in to wit of what he was saying, uh, if anybody has any questions about what he is talking about mortgages, you feel like you might be... Um, a good fit for something that he's told so far. You can also feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to put you in touch with him. Your score is your payment history, the amount you owe, the length of the credit history, the new credit you have, and the types of credit that you're using, whether that be student loans, car payments, or the like. What really hurts your score? Not paying your bills on time, opening too many accounts, um, closing old unused cards, signing up for retailer cards at the, at the counter just to get a discount, or maxing out your cards in total. Here's what I can tell you. If you have Credit Karma, or if you have Experian, or Capital One's CreditWise, or Discover's financial um, score that it gives you your FICO score, those are not necessarily gonna be in line with the credit scores that a mortgage lender is gonna pull. It's a good gauge, but it's not exact. So I want you to keep that in mind because a lot of people are often surprised when they say, oh, I have a 780 credit score, and then I pull their credit, and really it's a 690. So that's pretty much what goes into That's really credit. interesting. That's an interesting comment right there that he Why just made. I'm gonna, well. gonna while well, he's looking at the numbers here, I did not realize that uh, registering or, or applying for retail credit cards on the spot could actually negatively affect your credit. Also, um, the fact that the, when they pull credit off of these you know online credit score providers, that that may actually not be correct and may not be a good gauge as to whether or not you will be able to get a loan because it's not necessarily calculated the same way was according to what he's saying as an underwriter would. Very interesting stuff. I know. Are you W-2? Are you self-employed? Um, how long have you been in your job? Have you been in the same line of work? Are you salary? Are you hourly? Are you commissioned? Do you have any bonus? I want to I want to know and I want to find every bit of income that I can to make you look as financially strong as possible. So when I put that loan through the automated system, it will give me a good decision and say you're approved and you're okay to proceed. Dividends count if you have stocks. If you get paid Social Security, that counts. If you have a pension, that counts. If you receive alimony, that counts. Child support counts. Any income you derive pretty much counts as long as it's not a cash business. What kind of documents would I need from you? I would need uh, tax returns, W-2s, pay subs. If you're divorced, um, then I would want to see a social degree the child support amount or to see if you're paying child support. Both in those situations are super critical in figuring out what you can qualify for. Um, so security letters, pension award letters, if you own property and you have a Schedule E and you're having those properties show up on that Schedule E, then I want to see how you're writing them off and if they're going to affect your ability to qualify. If you own them for less than one year, then I would use a lease in place of that Schedule E. So keep that in mind. A lot of times I have people that come to me before they go file this year in 2018 for 2017 to talk about what they need to do with their Schedule E so that it doesn't impact them when they want to go buy their home in a couple months or later this year or even maybe later next year. <clears throat> His comment on Schedule E is super important for those of you that do file your taxes and use a Schedule E. Um, so if you are in that category and want to ask some more questions, he's definitely the guy to ask this to. If you have an IRA, if you have a 401k, if you have um, any kind of seller credits that the Aredos Investment Group has negotiated for you on your behalf, all that stuff counts 
to help reduce the amount you have to bring to closing and or prove that you have enough to do the deal and that you're strong enough to finish. What would I need? Last 60 days bank statement, quarterly statements if they're four. A lot of people ask questions about um, it, will the seller contribute to closing costs? And it's a major point of negotiation uh, that has been seen more and more. It's more and more prevalent right now when we're doing negotiations for clients. And it's a big deal. There's some other techniques that we use and some other negotiation techniques that we use that um, help give a similar response. But according to what Nelson's saying here, he's talking about its impact on you being able to actually achieve the loan. And in a lot of cases, this applies, especially if you don't have a lot of cash or you're in one of the FHA, VA, or USDA loan categories where you are coming up with uh, less money or zero down. Um, so this could be a big difference between getting the loan and not getting a loan. I've had several clients over the past couple of months uh, that were able to get a loan as a result of us being able to negotiate a seller contribution. Enough money in case something comes up. They want to know that not more than one person owns more than 10% of the unit. They want to know that there's no pending lawsuits or litigation against them suing someone or someone suing them. They also want to know that there's not a very high rental concentration that also bruises your ability to resell and also doesn't really help the lender in case you fall into foreclosure or something like that. Then you have single family homes. Single family homes, which could be your primary home or your second home. You also have uh, multi-unit homes, which you guys are not going to have a lot of, but those also come into play as well. And then from there, after we go through all those things, credit... Actually, not super accurate there. The We have more multi-units being built right now than ever before. So uh, up till now, no, it hasn't been very applicable. But going forward, we're seeing a lot of new growth, a lot of new multifamily builds uh, coming in, especially within the Airbnb areas. If you are an investor and are interested in learning more about that, please give me a call or contact me. And I'll let you know some of the most interesting things that are going on right now with building multifamily or high density within the downtown redevelopment area and within the Airbnb approved zone here in Las Vegas. And then they'll give you a letter. Then you have pre-approval. That's typically where the letter's going to take that same information. They're going to submit it through the same automated underwriting system. But technically, on a pre-approval, we're supposed to submit a loan in November. Most lenders will mark their letters pre-approval, but not submit. That's kind of where I do things a little differently. If you do meet the criteria, and I can get you through and qualify, and you can do the underwriting. Then I'm going to send your loan without a sales contract directly into underwriting, and that's big. There's not too many lenders out there that'll, that'll do that. They often wait until there's an actual live sales contract, and that can really blow up on them, especially if there's anything that they haven't gotten ahead of. So what Nelson is saying here is that, uh, like that he can actually get you right through back. underwriting without so, having a property picked out, which gives you a lot of negotiation power in the negotiation. And it gives the other side the ability to understand that you have a high rate of closure success. Well, because when five people want to make an offer on the same house and your letter says you have a loan and four other letters says that they, four other letters say that they can get a loan, I'm willing to bet that the seller and the listing agent are going to take a, take a second look at the letter that says you already have a loan. That means a lot. Not only does it have you stand out from everyone, but it also reduces the transaction time in half. So now they know that they can go ahead and close faster, probably anywhere between 14 to 21 days. And that's very on. accurate right they here. Um, these private lenders like Blue Leaf and some of the other ones that are <clears throat> doing some similar things are able to close loans in record times now, 14, 16 days I'm seeing. Or anything else that might come up in the process. It also tells the listing agent and the seller that you basically are committed, you're serious, and you're already halfway through the process. And I really think that that could be a big deal when it comes to um, trying to make an offer on a home and have it accepted. The application, how do uh, how do we do it? So how I do it is most of the applications are done either by phone or online. 99% of the time these days, everybody can do it online unless they, um, they're they technically challenged and they don't really, you know, are, are good with technology and they, they just feel more comfortable with phone. That's okay, too. And then after you do that application, then basically I'm going to ask you to send some documents. So that application.
conversation is key. It's going to tell me everything I need to know, and then I'm going to get back on the phone with you, and then we're going to dot every I, and we're going to cross every T. What does my process look like? So I usually have everyone do it online or over the phone. Then I collect those documents like I mentioned. And then typically within one to two weeks of completing that process, I'll either set up an in-person meeting, have a video call with them, or do a phone call to review all Now, the my experience with Nelson um, is working with him now for a while. The uh, one to two week is actually probably a major over projection. He probably has some kind of a mandate that says that he can't, you know, say anything less than that. But he has been approving and getting the application process done in a matter of days. And so um, I, I do want to share that with you guys that my experience here with him is that he's very quick turnaround on getting you approved. The biggest key is whether or not you can get your application information together quickly. So on the screen right here, you see the, the main things that are, um, that are going to be expected in the loan application, as well as the previous few uh, few slides ago, he mentioned about the list of, of documents that would be used, like if you're divorced, the divorce decree, and so on and so forth. So compiling that and getting yourself prepared to be able to speak to a lender is key, is key, key. And it's key when it comes to dealing with a real estate agent, because a lot of times real estate agents are going to uh, be, we get approached and we say, oh, I, you know, I want to find a house. I've been talking to a lender. But if you haven't actually got the approval from the lender, then everybody's spinning their wheels. We are finding a property for you. We're setting up a property search for you. Um, and we don't really know if that is is the proper range of what you can afford. Um, and, and so it, it ends up kind of spinning your wheels. And if you come back and you can't afford everything that you've been looking for, it's kind of a letdown too, because you're going to be looking at, you know, more expensive homes than what you can afford. So it's really, we like to do things backwards, I like to say, at the Real Estate Investment Group here. We like to start from the ground up, and we like to have our clients go through uh, a, a lending pre-qual, I mean a pre-approval or underwriting pre-approval, the way that Nelson is describing it here, um, prior to setting up a search, because it ends up making the process a lot easier on you, the client. How do you start? Um, you can ask your agent for referral, you can ask your family and friends. Um, a referral from someone that just recently closed the loan successfully. There's a third party you can ask who's, you know, worked with them personally, professionally. So maybe like a housing agency or, or a home counselor. Um, what are you looking for? You want to look for someone who has an advisor mentality, who's honest, who's genuine, who wants to help you even if you don't qualify right now, but wants to give you a plan. You want to work with someone who has good communication skills, who wants to explain things thoroughly, someone who's going to be patient in their approach and caring because a lot of times this is the first time that people are going through this or you can make it a second time. I actually just want to jump in here and just say a lot of the stuff that you're seeing on the screen right here also applies to real estate agents. Um, you definitely would like to take a referral from someone who just recently closed, uh, somebody that you know. Um, you know, family and friends, sometimes as a real estate agent, it's tough to hire family and friends because you feel obligated to hire them, but they may not actually be able to do the things that you need them to do. And it's funny because I run into this issue often with uh, clients who have a friend who does lending or have a friend who does title or escrow. And meanwhile, although, you know, you, you always want to try to recommend somebody, they, a lot of times I'm realizing that the people that are being recommended on the deal don't necessarily know how to do it. Um, I'm seeing that a lot in the marketplace right now. Our experience is 92% of all real estate agents and brokers don't understand the mathematics of the real estate market. And I will extend that a little bit to say that a lot of the tangential businesses that we deal with as in, in our clients deal with um, throughout the process also are maybe not up to speed on the most current uh, methods or the most current rules and regulations, or more importantly, on the most current technology. And so that's where our team excels. <clears throat> and that's where a guy like Nelson Morales at Blue Leaf Lending here excels as well because his company is very technologically advanced. I mentioned this in the very beginning of the broadcast. I don't know if everybody skipped that because there wasn't anything going on, but I figured I'd mention it again. Back. And keep in mind, we're all we're all out here and, and, and we're living life and we're doing our things and we have to work and we have family and kids and all kinds of stuff. So we want to make sure that we're giving people ample time to return a call. If someone calls you and they don't call you back in 10 minutes, that's, that's probably not a good indication. You want to give them a couple hours. If it's the end of a business day, give them until the next business day. I mean, we also have to be very mindful of other people in their lives, too. That's a really good point that he just made there. Um, this is just a little chart that I put together that basically says, you know, you can have a lender. You can have just a broker. You can have a correspondent lender. You can have a bank. I happen to be all three of these. A bank, which is the lender. I'm a broker, and I'm also a correspondent lender. I have a lot of options. That's what kind of makes me 
flexible and gives me the opportunity to work with many people on many different levels across many different states. You know, this is a great slide because uh, um, in it, it shows it shows a little bit about the different types of questions that you need to be asking when you're dealing with a lender. Most of the lenders that I've seen out there of recent do not fit that first category. Um, most of them are brokers that will go and submit your application to a third party lender. And so earlier in the, in the presentation when Nelson was talking about portfolio loans, that's what he's referring to as an actual lender to customer relationship where they're the ones that are writing and guaranteeing the loan. They're the ones underwriting the loans, you're guaranteeing it. Um, but they're actually writing them in house against their own portfolio of money. So they're the ones that are actually lending you the money. You're not getting brokered to a third party. Um, it's very important and it's actually a really big deal as you get into making your payments and as the course of the loan takes place and you're paying down the loan. It's much more important to be able to know that you can call Nelson and he represents the actual lender rather than is a broker that's going to give you the name of somebody else that's going to that's going to put you to somebody else to put somebody else before you finally get to somebody that can tell you stuff. For 60 days out, and that's something that is a side conversation that I have with my, with my clients and borrowers. And basically, the longer out you lock, the higher the rate is today. So my approach oftentimes with people is that what I want to do is I want to put them in a position to get the exact market rate that they can. I watch it closely, and I always make sure that I try to shoot for either 30 or 45 or less. That way, I'm making sure that they're happy, they get the market rate that they want, and everything works out. This is a good example here of... When you talk about um, closing talking about uh talking about the time frame and that's one of the reasons why you want to go through the process you want to get it you want to get yourself underwritten approved um with a company that does it like blue leaf and with nelson uh because it really makes the entire real estate process easier on you especially in the market that we're in right now where you're having most of these are multiple offer situations um many times you're dealing with cash buyers that are your competitors uh, it's very important to have your ducks in a row here and move quickly so that you can make the best decision, lock in the best rate. Although these are not closing costs, they are collected at closing. And what they're doing is, is they're collecting things for you today to pay for things for you later. Like, they're going to collect your taxes, probably two months, maybe three, sometimes six, but mostly two. They'll collect your homeowner's insurance for two or three months. They're going to place that in a side account, and then whenever those bills come due, whether it be annually or semi-annually, they're going to dip into that account, and they're going to make those payments for you. You also have included in those closing costs or those prepays what's called days of interest, also known as daily interest. And that is basically the days left over in the month that you own the home. So if you close in a month and there's 30 days, and you close on the 25th day of the month, and there's five days left over, you're gonna pay five days of interest because that's the time frame that you've owned the home. You owned it five days of that month. And then technically, that is to pay for the month that you're in. That's your mortgage payment. The following month, you're not gonna make it a payment. You're gonna skip a month, and then the month after that, you're gonna make your first payment. When you go to make your first payment, what's gonna end up happening is, is that's gonna be for the month before. And then the following month will be for the month before that, and so forth and so on. And that's pretty much how it looks. So it's kind of nice. This is another interesting point because I didn't realize that you actually pay your mortgage in in retro. I always thought you paid it in advance. And sometimes that's nice too because then people can take their time, they can move, they can paint, they can. It says that mortgage payments are paid in arrears according to daily interest. Well, time frame. So when you're talking about a time frame, most contracts can be written from anywhere between 30 to 60 days, which is typical. And then if you they can be written for much longer take or shorter. Two to five days. <clears throat> you can your rate at pretty much any time, but no later than two weeks before closing, I'd say. Um, then I'll order an appraisal, days two through five. Your loan will go to underwriting, days three through six. And these are all business days, so keep that in mind. Then the loan is conditionally approved, days seven through 20. And then the loan is clear to close, and then you can probably do that between days 21 to 30. Um, at the time that you're clear to close, and the lender, myself, and my team, we have to send out what's called a closing disclosure. That's basically your closing statement that's going to give you all the costs that's associated with the loan. Typically, I'll go over that with everyone at the 
end and make sure that they understand everything that's going on. But you cannot close any earlier than three days before that document is signed. So if you want to close on a Wednesday and you sign this document on a Monday, it's not going to work. You would have to close that. You would have to sign that document Monday and then close on Thursday. That's the best thing you can do for yourself. Um, at that point, you're going to bring any remaining funds you need to bring the closing and ID, and then congratulations, the hope is yours. Now, here's something that I put together that I thought was was super helpful, and it's kind of like my tips, and I call it current market and the reality. You know, the reality is, is that inventory is low, so start early. Stay the course, you're going to lose a lot of deals before that you get the one you want. Very true. Make sure you're being patient, make sure you're being proactive, make sure that you're engaging with your professionals, your agent, your lender, whoever's helping you. Um, don't wait to make an offer if you like it, be ready. Yeah. Shoot first and ask questions later. If you see something you like at the rate things are going and how long things place, are hanging out, place the, the market, offer. You don't want to say, "Oh, I like it, but um, I want my mother to come see it." Or, right. I like it, but right. I really want my brother to see it. Right. It's probably not going to help you too much if in this market if you're doing that because by the time you come back, that property is going to be gone. So I would yeah. say be ready. He's very accurate on this. Extremely. Eighty ten ten rule. If you're eighty percent happy with the home and you can fix or upgrade ten percent of what you don't like and you can live with the remaining ten percent that you can do nothing about, then go for it. It's I mean, a really good rule. Nothing is ever going to be hundred percent to your satisfaction. We're talking about other people's tastes, their interests, and what they like and how they design the home. So you got to make it your own. He's very right about that. Um, and he's about to talk about being realistic on your situation here and not looking at million dollar homes if you can only buy a 250. But that also applies to, if you can only afford 250,000, don't look at $300,000 houses, especially not in this market, because there's no chance that you're even gonna get it. It's a waste of your time, and it's a waste of locking that interest rate in so your, your clock is ticking. So it's gonna be a big deal. Don't ever compare yourself. Um, and lastly, that's a good point, you know, too. It's going to be your first home. If it is your first home, if it's your second home, even, it's not your last, more than likely. So think move up, think baby steps, think how can I get myself into the home I really want to be in in the next three, five, or ten years from now. And at the end of the day, the point is getting started. If yeah, he's things, right. You want to get started. You want to have something. Get you started. Want to talk to a lender. Talk to a real estate agent. Talk to people in the know. Talk to the professionals that know what's going on. That's why we put this webinar on for all of our clients and our viewers um, because you have to know the information. You also have to know people that you can ask to get the right information. To go ahead and be able to take the sales proceeds of that sale and buy a new home. Maybe keep the same payment. Maybe have it be a little bit higher depending on where the market's at at the time. But ultimately, the point is that you have options as opposed to not having anything and you have nothing to sell. And then it's basically solely based on where the market's at and how much money you have to put down. So those are kind of like my current market and, and reality statements there. Um, that is the presentation. I really thank you guys for jumping on today and taking a look at this. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to see if there's um, any questions. You can feel free to send me a chat here. Um, and then um, we can go ahead and uh, and go from there. So I believe that um, there's a couple of questions popping through right now. So let's go with um, Gio's question. And so give me a second here. I'm going to unmute the lines. Test. Test. Can you hear me? <clears throat> can you hear me? Hello, hello. Here with me here. No problem. So I'm going to ask a quick question here uh, to Mr. Morales about the bridge loan because he uh, he was talking. So, Gio. Yes. You had a question about bridge loans, so why don't you go ahead? Yeah, a couple of things here in the last slide that you presented. Um, made me think of a couple of clients that I have in mind uh, that are thinking they, they need to sell their house and they don't have 
enough money without selling the house to be able to go and place an offer on a new house until they cash out on the on the closing of their current sale. You know, is that something that a bridge loan can do? And if not, can you explain what it is and how it works? Sure. So how a bridge loan works is a lender will take the current residence the person occupies or holds, and they're going to place a lien on that home and open up that home's equity for that same client to use money from that home to buy the other home without having to sell or refinance their current mortgage. I mean, technically wow. refinancing, but what that's going to end up doing is it's going to end up have, giving them the ability to go buy the next home without having to put their home on the market. Now, bridge loans are going to be relatively inexpensive in payment. They'll be interest only more than likely, and they'll more than likely have only a term of about 12 months. But what it does is it helps them um, sell the home at a later point without having to have the stress of two closings or proceeds or collaboration and basically make the process smoother so they can buy the next place, move in, and then go ahead and uh, and then go back and have them sell or list their other place so that they can move forward and get rid of it. That's excellent. <clears throat> Are those uh, loans that you do, do you do bridge loans? I, I do do bridge loans. I cannot do bridge loans in the state of Nevada, unfortunately. Okay. But um, but I, I do have access to them here, here at home. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so I got a chat question here. Um, the question is, how good is the, how long is the loan approval good for? So the loan approval is good for 120 days. When I pull your credit, the documents you can send me, they're fine. I'll take a look at them. But really what it comes down to is, is how how long is the credit report good for? At 120 days, that means that any time in that time frame, you can go ahead and make an offer. If we get close to the end, we're going to have to repull the credit again. But this is exactly why I stress or encourage people to do the underwrite and send them through right away. Because ultimately, what's going to end up happening is that underwrite or that loan commitment and loan approval is good for 120 days anyway. So whether you're getting your credit pulled or not, we might as well submit the loan, put you in a better position to negotiate your offer because they expire at exactly the same time. Regardless. Yeah, and then get the process started be, and start searching for your home. That, um, that can really help you, you know, get the house that you really want. Um, let's see if we got any other questions in here. Okay, in the chat box. So are there any first-time home buyer programs? There are. There's a lot of them. I have one that gives up to $6,000 in down payment assistance. That's very helpful. There's also some standard programs that you can use that are from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Have you ever heard those names? Those are the ones that will allow you to put 3% down, um, get a better interest rate, lower, they give, um, they charge less on mortgage insurance. And, and that's super helpful. So there's, there's a lot of programs out there. Again, it all depends on your scenario, what your credit score is, what you qualify for, are you truly a first-time home buyer? In some cases, you don't have to be a first-timer. You just can't own any other property at the time you apply. So I think that's a that's an area where sometimes people get confused where they, sh they talk to me and they say, you know nothing, I, I'm not a first-time home buyer. I owned a home five years ago. And I say, well, that's okay. Yeah, and you don't have, as long as you don't own anything right now, it shouldn't be an issue and you can certainly do it, no problem. So that's, um, that's something that I would definitely um, take a second look at. Just through here, other questions. Great, great question. So other question on here is, um, What's the difference between an adjustable rate mortgage and a fixed rate mortgage? So, good question. So, the difference between an adjustable rate mortgage and a fixed rate mortgage is that a fixed rate mortgage, the payment will stay the same for the entire time that you pick. If it's 15 years, if it's 20 years, if it's 30 years. 
an adjustable rate mortgage is only going to be set up for a specified period of time on that payment. So you can have a three-year, you can have a five-year, a seven-year, a 10-year. That payment is only going to stay the same for those period of years. And then that first year after that, it's going to start to adjust. Sometimes when those payments adjust, it could be better or it could be worse. But it really depends on your financial goal and your objective. If you only think you're going to be in a home for seven years, and most people are only in a home for seven or ten years, then maybe that's something you want to do. Adjustable rate mortgages typically carry with them um, lower interest rates than 30-year fixed mortgages. So if it's a way for you to um, lower that payment because you know you're only going to be there for a short time with your starter home, then that then that might be a good way to go. And that's it, it's it's certainly helpful. It, it's definitely a conversation that takes a little bit more in-depth discussion. They're not, you know, contrary to popular belief, adjustable rate mortgages are not all bad. They're great tools to manage financial, you know, debts and to make sure that you're keeping your payments on time and that you basically get to where you're going next. So um, that's basically the difference. But feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to have a deeper conversation about it. There's certainly much more to it than that. If we got any other questions here popping up. This is interesting. In order to <clears throat> mortgage insurance, which you can only do on a conventional mortgage, not FHA because that's standard, what's going to end up happening is you got a couple different options. You can do it the traditional way that everyone knows about, which is you pay it monthly, or you can do it um, what they call single premium, which is you can pay a lump sum up front, and then that would be for the life of the loan, and then you would get rid of it, and then that would go away on the monthly. That, of course, assumes that you have the money to pay it off. Um, then there could be a third way, which is called lender paid mortgage insurance, which ultimately all that means is that you're not going to have the mortgage insurance. You're not going to pay for it up front and you're not going to pay for it every month. You're going to take it in the form of an interest rate increase. So if the market rate is 4%. That's really interesting. So there's no ways to eliminate it, but there are different ways to defer it or rewrap it into your loan somehow. Then you can do that and take a four and a half percent interest rate versus the four and not pay it out of pocket and not have to pay it every month. And again, it certainly depends on your situation, but it is super helpful if you're trying to find a way to minimize payments and keep costs down. I mean, at the end of the day, whether the rate is four, five, six, or seven, it's right now the money is very inexpensive and it's going to have minimal impact to the payment, unless, of course, you're buying an 800000 or a million dollar home. So essentially, that's that's a couple different ways that we can talk about how to get rid of mortgage insurance without putting the 20% down. And you can also split the mortgages. That's a little more advanced. You know, it's the ability to talk to somebody like Nelson who is so well-versed in so many different avenues of the lending process. It's nice to listen to somebody like him that is really a professional, that really understands the industry um, and, and ins and outs of of how to create the right mortgage for you. It's very cool. Loving this. Well, great. It looks like nobody has any more questions. Um, I really want to thank you guys for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all the great questions. Again, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, my number here in the office is 224 585 0287 again 224-585-0287 feel free to email me at nmorales at blueleaflending.com and i'd be more ha more than happy to uh, reach out and speak to you you can also reach out to geo and geo and, and crew the aratus investment group thank you again for having me on I appreciate it. Um, we do great business i know your team is working hard you guys are going to have a great year and i really love your approach to taking everything by the numbers that's certainly the best approach that anyone can do that's really how this works and that, that, thank that's you for that, Nelson. Take care of people in, in a good way. So thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> have a great day. We will talk to you soon. Best of luck and have a great year. Bye-bye.
Awesome. Well, that was uh, Mr. Nelson Morales, and that was a very, uh, <clears throat> it was a very good presentation with a lot of interesting information. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, and no matter what, every time I speak to him, there's always a little tidbit, a little, little bit of information that comes that I didn't know, um, and uh, and so it it was very interesting. The, the couple of the things that. Um, a couple of the things that he mentioned on there uh, was um, were things that, <clears throat> for instance, uh, getting rid of the mortgage insurance, like he was talking about at the end, um, the fact that certain types of incomes um, can be used and certain things cannot be used. It was it was a great great presentation with a lot of interesting information. Um, these were some of the deep discussion topics that you can get in deeper with um, the main kind of top level bullet points of uh, the process of the loan, um, how to how to go through it, how to obtain it, and most importantly, how to be prepared for it, what kinds of documents are you gonna need to, to, to uh, provide, and then how long is that information good for before you have to provide it again? Um, if you or anybody uh, has any other questions about anything that we just watched or anything that I said about what we just watched, please feel free to reach out to me, geo, G-I-O at R-E-I-G-L-V dot com, G-I-O at R-E-I-G-L-V dot com, or you can send me a text message to 702-805-2720. Everybody have a wonderful day, and thanks again for joining us for this special webinar. We may be doing more of these in the future. If you liked it or you're interested in joining us for the next one, please make sure to either leave a comment or, or contact me at the information that I just said. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody.